Okay, here we are in the afternoon. Pretty much been working all day. I burned out this locust stump. It's gone, just, it's all that's left right here. And this is wide enough, I can put an ATV through here if I want. I left these two right here, just so that if someone comes from your direction, they don't run into this fireplace. And then I'm coming through here. This last tree needs to go, but again, it's kind of like it forces people to come down through here. So uh, anyway, until that fire's done, come down through here. And here we go. You saw this earlier. This is where I started. There was a giant brush all through here. I came through, I took this out, and I took out a couple big trees. And there they are over there. And uh, did it with an axe. Left the chainsaw at the house again. Keep doing that, but it's okay, it's a good workout. Definitely strengthening my strengthening my back and stomach muscles, which is really good. I'm, this is my gym right here. So, pretty much open. Perfect. Time to plant a pond. Thanks for watching. It's been fun. Stay so, peaceful. create a little fire ring so I can burn out some thorns. This is my road. You can see how it kind of goes right through there. And then this off the left of my road, it's gonna be my pond. There's my little house right there. And uh, so this is gonna be my pond from uh, right about up there to about here, from over here to about where the sycamore is right there. This whole thing's gonna be a pond. So I just wanna show you what it looked like before or after. I gotta clear out the rest of them trees and inside there, the rest of those trees gotta come out and then uh, I gotta do a bunch more stuff and then I can get out my liner and wait for it to rain. Thanks for watching. Okay, I just wanted to shoot a little video before I go home. Show you what I did. This area right here is the new road I cut through. On the other side of this, <clears throat> I uh, dug out a stump, stump's right there, and then while I was digging it out, I took a lot of rocks and dirt and created a berm, and we'll walk you around here. That's about five to six feet deep right there from the top of the berm, and uh, this was four feet deep, but now this is all filled all back up, and this is going to be my spillway because this is going to be a giant pond. You can see my little cabin way out there in the back of that. Since it's going to go deeper in the center, I'm going to go to six foot instead of four foot. That's going to bring that in maybe just a tiny, tiny bit right there and maybe bring this in a tiny bit. We're going to see how it works out. This is Pete from Intricate Nature and thanks for watching and uh, subscribe or comment. Whatever you got to do, tell me. Uh, I'd love to hear what you got to say. Um, this right here was all done with a pick and a shovel and a rake. And that's it. So, pick, shovel, rake. Oh, and I used an axe on a, on a couple of tree roots. But that's, see, it's possible to build a, farm, build a, build a pond in an off-grid situation without a backhoe. Thanks for watching. Stay peaceful. So, what I got was, I took out this big huge knob and I tried to get around this freaking stump and I just can't get it. I worked and worked and worked and dug as deep as I possibly could. Found out a giant stone, giant stone, giant stone. It's growing down the middle. I used an ax for a while. I used a chainsaw and it's still just will not budge, just will not move. So, last option, we're gonna set on fire next time I get here. And there's another stump over there, I kinda wanna cut that out, but we'll see how that happens. Basically, I took all this area all the way out to here, and 
I created a dam. Originally did it all in uh, in logs, but now I made put in boulders, rock, and uh, dirt, and that is about three feet high now. But it was it was four foot of freaking dirt, and it's about four feet wide. So I can show you a huge difference from when I'm being up, when I'm up here. Walk all the way up to the top here. So you can see my feet. You can look out over the pond. Fish keep bugs away. I don't like bugs. So gonna have fish probably swim with the fish. I have this giant tulip popper right here. And I wanted to save that so I built the berm in and around it down in there. You can see how it's working out. And I pretty much took out all this dirt around there, around there. There was a big hump right there. I took out that and there was a hump right there. So I took that out. That's all gone. And then this is just an old uh, dryer ring. And I was using it to burn out the stump. And I'll show you results of that. Not completely done. But the stump was about this high before and about that wide. So, got a little more to go in there. Next time I come down here, I'll bring some more scrap wood and burn the rest of that down. And burn that out. So, burn out this stump. Burned out that one last time. Right down here is about six foot deep. I'm going to do a little walk down in here. Do a pan around. I want to show you. So, basically, that's the height right there. We had a stump here, cut it off flush, cut out the tree roots, kind of flushed it all out. This was, this was all open right here, wide open, and it created a monster dam. This was natural height. I just added a little bit to get myself an edge. I had a boulder in the middle, nothing I could do about it, I'm just going to fill back in around it. I took, a, I took one out of here, I took one out of there. You can see the height here. It kind of goes there, there. We're going to make that kind of like flush out, kind of marsh it out a little bit right up in there. Now we're going to turn it around on you. I'm going to show you my height compared to background. Like this is at my chin. You can see. my height right there. Pretty cool, huh? So now I just want to take a little video of how I'm finishing this out. I'm not going too wide here. It's six foot deep right here. I'm not going to go too wide. I'll leave it about here. It's going to slope it up real gradual from here. I just wanted to give a point down at the bottom so, you know, uh, it's a four foot liner, but if I went two foot and I kind of folded it down a little bit, then I'm going to have two foot for room for debris over the years. It's just going to fill up to four foot by the time all that gook fills up. So I wanted for a place for it to go. So that was important to me. That way I'm not at four foot and that's filling into my into my areas. And then nice thing about this, I'm gonna give myself contour lines. So I've got a line through here, got a line through here, I'm gonna have a cut and a drop. It's gonna go over top another drop. And this is all good structure for fish. So I read uh, there's two types of ponds. One type of pond is a, a flat shallow water pond. So animals can get in. That's it. So I have my flat shallow water right along here. And it's pretty shallow up in here. And then there's a fish pond. And that's a really deep water pond. Well, it's not dead deep. Six foot's about as deep as it's going to be. But now I have the best of both worlds. I have shallow. I have deep. I have, I have, uh, I have uh, different levels. And I believe this so is going to work I picked all this carpeting off people's tree lawns. And what I'm going to be doing with it is, see it out there? I'm going to be laying it across the whole center. It's going to cover all my contour lines. And that's going to help guard against any punctures on my liner. 
Stay with me. I'll show you how it's going and how it gets put in. So I just want to show that I'm putting in the carpet. These are pieces, parts of carpet that I garbage picked off someone's tree lawn. A couple tree lawns actually. And I'm putting down carpeting so it creates a buffer between the liner and the ground. Still burning out this stump here. Burning every possible debris I can find to make sure the stump is completely burned out before I take another piece of carpeting and go over the top of this and this. Looks like I'm only going to have enough carpeting this time to do around here, around here. Okay, so my good friend Patricia mentioned that in order to protect my pool liner, since I didn't have sand, to use old carpeting. So I went around on garbage day and picked all this carpet. And obviously I don't have enough. Looks like I need some on the edges and I need some over here. The problem, the problem that occurs to me is I'm going to use rainwater to fill it. So I don't know if it's going to really make a difference. I think I got, I got some time to get some more carpeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pond liner down in here and let it, let it fill up. I think that's enough to size what I got to size and figure out where I'm going. Uh, what I'm going to do over this is I'm going to put tarps. So, so what I did here was I uh, collected lumber tarps for a better part of a month from a local lumber yard's dumpster. And even though I have my uh, carpet and my padding underneath it all, I'm putting uh, lumber tarps underneath it on the same principle like you pitch a tent. You put a base layer down. Well, I'm putting a base layer down and I'm going to put my line over top of this. But this should give you a pretty good idea. And that's what I did. So far, everything is recycled. This is going to give me a little bit more strength on my liner. Stay with me. There's the liner up on the left. So there it is, folks. Pool. 33 foot pool liner laid out. I went a little bit bigger on the sides. I got a bigger dam of dike around the edges. And we'll see what happens. I'm hoping in a couple years maybe it overflows the edges and gets up the edge of that thin dot sides and maybe it gets some dirt on there and I'll push it back to the edge. We'll see how it goes. But there we go. All in, all in, all done. Waiting for rain. That's good because look, it's cloudy. Perfect timing.